Hi, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Sorry if that was a bit strange at the beginning. How are you all? Good evening. Right. Hello to number five of our Body Image Lives. I'm sorry if um, I couldn't do it yesterday, but... Um, yeah, it was just, there was too many things that were happening at the same time, so I couldn't do it yesterday. But here we are. So if this is your first time joining one of our Body Image Lives, um, I really would recommend that you go back and you watch the first four because we've discussed so much. And I was just saying over on Instagram, I've had some emails and I really am incredibly moved by the people that have really felt you know, brave enough to share back with me that they've really got something from it, that they're really feeling a shift. And that is so exciting and so lovely. Really felt, you know, brave enough to share oh, back with no, me that they've really got something from it, that they're really feeling a shift. And that is so exciting and so lovely. Really felt you know, brave enough to share oh, back with no, me that again. they've really got something from it, that they're really feeling a shift, and that is so exciting and so lovely. Myself. Really felt, you no. know, brave enough to share oh, back with no, me that no. they've really got something from it, that they're really feeling a shift, so and that is so exciting and so lovely. Myself. Really felt, you no. know, brave enough. Shift and that's so exciting and so lovely. Really felt, you know, brave enough. Ah, can you hear me now? Shift and that's so exciting and so lovely. Really felt, you know, brave enough. What do you do, Michelle? Ah, can you hear me now? Shift and that's so exciting and so lovely. Really felt, you know, brave enough. Can you hear me now? Shift and that's so exciting and so lovely. Really felt. You know, what do you do, Michelle? Ah, can you hear me now? Shift and that's so exciting and so lovely. Really felt, you know, brave enough. What do you do, Michelle? I've turned, there's no Bluetooth ah. on or anything. Here can you hear me now? Bless Hello, everyone. Bless everyone. Shift and that's so exciting and so lovely. Really felt. What have you done? The work, the check with everyone. Can you hear me now, guys? Hi, can you hear me? It's what happens is I speak and then it comes back in a second. No, that was a, it was a oh, it's so annoying when this happens. What are people saying? Yes, is it all good? Better. Thank you. Right. So sorry if you. It, it's so irritating because now if somebody comes to watch this uploaded, there. If I was them, I'd spend a minute and then I'd go sod this. <laughs> so very frustrating, but there you go. So what was I saying? Yeah. So really lovely. Um, uh, thank you for the emails, um, sharing your stories, and also for those that have been saying that they're really getting something from it. So let me just do a quick, quick recap in case this is your first time here. So in a nutshell, this is a group where we are trying to shift our stinking thinking away from... It's almost like an addiction to negative thinking about our bodies and find a place of acceptance. That does not mean a place of total confidence where you are jumping around half naked all the time, feeling amazing. Um, it's not, it's and, and truly, truly feeling amazing. It's about learning how to sometimes fake it to make it. Like when you see me on Instagram, just like... Right, I'm just going to do that. That's kind of me faking it to make it. And then it's all right. And the world doesn't stop turning. And lots of people get a lot from it. And people laugh. And it's fantastic. So that's the place where I really fake it to make it. First few days now on holiday, I will get up and I'll go, I'm okay. I'm wearing this beginning. And I and I push through. And, um, and it's okay. And this is through a lot of work that I've got to this place. But... For those of you that have been here every week, you will know this. I also went for a while to something called Overeaters Anonymous. It's a free group, just exactly the same as AA, Alcoholics Anonymous or Cocaine Anonymous. And it's for people with disordered eating. You don't have to be an overeater. You could be in any situation, disordered thinking about your body. 
And there were some things from it that I really, really took and, and it made a big difference to me and other things that didn't at all. And I, pick, pick, I picked and chose which bits worked for me. But I wanted to share this thing. That the thing that really helped me was this simple rule that they said, which was, when you hear somebody else's story, don't look for the differences, look for the similarities. And that's what we've been doing every week. I've been reading somebody, one of you, you know, many of you, very brave, sent your stories in. I read their story. And then when you're listening, listen for where it may be the same, not where it's different. So if I'm reading and somebody is saying, oh, my God, it absolutely, you know, I, I you know, got this in my life, got that in my life, this is going brilliant, that's going brilliant, but I hate my legs and I'm obsessed with my legs and it affects everything I do. Don't hear, oh, well, I'm actually all right with my legs, so this hasn't got anything to do with me because it's not about that. It's about the stinking thinking. It's not actually about the way that we look or the bits and pieces that we like or don't like. It's about enmeshed messed up thinking, whether that's come, well, I believe it comes from loads of different places. I think it comes from things that are said to us when we're very young. I think it comes to us through the images that we're sold. I think it comes to us when we might have anxiety about other things. Certainly, I think now there is a connection for some of my stuff to ADHD. Um, it can come from overthinking, it can come from problems that are much bigger than the way that we look, but somewhere we have learnt the pattern of anxiety about focusing on that means that we don't have to focus on other stuff. It can keep us isolated, it can keep us away from um, pushing ourselves and, and doing things that are a bit scary. Um, we can use the fact that we hate the way that we look as a way to avoid doing pushing ourselves out there. Um, we could also starve ourselves or overeat because um, we want to comfort ourselves. And people starve yourself, yeah. Yeah, starving yourself can be a comfort because it can be, a, you know, in a messed up head, it can be a way of like controlling other feelings. So I have to say this every week, I am not a professional. In, lovely to see you here, Ashley. I am not a professional in any way. I am not a psychiatrist. I am not a psychotherapist. I'm not a counsellor. I'm not anything. I'm just a woman who has been through loads of different things. I'm a woman that other people might look at and go, well, what's she worry about? But again, it's not my, that's, that's not the point. I've been 13 stone. I've been eight and a half stone. I've been an, a, a, a compulsive comfort eater. I have, st I have fluctuated my weight up and down. I've done every diet. You would tell me one single diet and I'm going to have done it. You ask me the calorie for anything, I'm going to know it. And But what I know, having been in show business for the last 40 years, and I have seen and met and interviewed some of the most beautiful, what we would say, perfect people, and guess what? So many of them have exactly the same shit going on in their heads. So I reiterate, it is not the way we look. It's the way we talk to ourselves. And it's the way we refuse to be as kind to ourselves as we would to others. So as I read these stories, I want you to hear, look for, listen for the similarities. And then I want we're going to share that. So... From this point on, from when I'm talking because it's really brave and, and really kind of the people that write in when I read their stuff. We don't have any cross-talking at this point, no uh, messaging, anything outside of what we're talking about so that we can really give respect to the person, the story that we're listening to. It's a wonderfully polite and lovely community here, but if anybody is unkind or unpleasant, we take you off and we block you and you will never be able to come back to the channel. So... Everybody be really mindful of that. Kindness is the way. So, um, let's have a look. We've got some various ones here. I'm also going to read you a Donna Ashworth poem uh, at the end as well. I've been reading some poems over in our members area on the Sunday show and people are really enjoying them. Donna Ashworth writes brilliantly about body image and female things. And listen, we've got some men here as well. 
I say female, but I mean male and female, so don't worry about that. But but there was a little poem I saw today, and I'm going to read it at the end because did not remind me of something I said last week, and I swear to God I had not read this particular poem. Donna and I, we got some deep sister from another mister stuff going on. Um, she's a fantastic poet, modern day poet, talking about always writing poems about the stuff that we're all going through. If you have never treated yourself to a Donna Ashworth poetry book, do it. Yeah. OK, here we go. So from this point on, no cross cross messaging. Just please listen to um, to what I'm to this uh, beautiful message from Julie. Now, Julie's put a name. If you want to be anonymous, if you're sending in your stories, you can always be anonymous. But Julie is sharing her name with us. So. Hi, Nadia. I'm Julie, 56 years old. I feel I've struggled with body image all of my life. Over the past couple of weeks, with yours and everyone's help, that's the community here, which I love this, and some therapy and a lot of light bulb moments listening to you and everyone else's stories, I finally feel I'm making a breakthrough. Isn't that just so lovely? When growing up and still to this day, my mum has always called herself fat. She's 80. My mum is 85 and she will still diss her body. We don't want to be like that, do we, guys? We're wanting to arrest this. We do not want to be doing this to ourselves in our 80s. And she's been on diets, hidden food around the house. And I've grown up thinking fat was a bad thing and that everyone would dislike me if I were to become fat. Because if my own mum judged me, Everyone would. At the age of 10 years, I started cutting out food groups, becoming a vegetarian, etc. Also as a child, I was if I was naughty, I would be punished by being sent to bed without my tea. Oh my God. Never do that, guys. Never use food as a punishment with children. Never, 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 never. Um, I then, as a teenager, started with disordered eating. That's without food, days without food, then binge and be sick. I was very thin and hated my body. I thought I was fat when I was a size six to eight. Still to this day, if my mum meets someone or goes to a party, the first thing she'll say about someone is, oh, hasn't she put on weight? So in turn, I feel people are judging me as my mum judges. Not surprising. I don't judge anyone and I know that she has a problem that has been passed from her to me and my sister. My sister and I support each other. I hope your sister joins this little community as well. I met my husband mid-30s and had a beautiful boy. Um, but I was bigger, my bigger than I was when I became bigger than I was when I met my husband. And he tells me how much he loves me and my body. I'm working on myself every day. I stand in front of the mirror and tell myself how much I love myself. I've recently started intuitively eating and thinking before I eat. For the first time in years, I ate meat and I bloody loved it. <laughs> love this bit, Julie. I had a bacon bucket butty at the weekend for the first time in 40 odd years. It gave my body what it wanted and you know what? It was happy and settled and I didn't crave anything else after that. I try very hard to talk positively about myself in front of my son. So important. I know I haven't in the past and he's actually said, Mum, stop. You look, you look great. And I'm catching myself before I say anything about his weight. I tell him I love him every day and how beautiful he is. Also, another thing my mum does is call good and bad and herself good or bad if she's eaten something. There's literally... Meh, 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 alarm bells. I did pull her up the other day and said no food is good or bad. Thank you for reading and also giving me a place to share. Uh, massive thank you. You're making such a difference. Thank you, Julie. Big hugs and love to everybody here from Julie. So, where did that chime for somebody? It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but hearing Julie's story, did it, 
did it give you any you any light bulb moments and julie can i just say a huge huge thank you to you for sharing that your kind words your supportive words to the group and your your honesty and your insight i mean the thing is you just you know don't you? you you can see all the stinking thinking and where it comes from you know for me it's weird just just showing you again about how you look for the similarities and not the differences um my mum still to this day if I say she looks nice she'll say to me why are you saying that to me that doesn't help me I'm fat and she's tiny you know my extended family you know the arab family very generous with their food always like feeding you feeding you it would be oh you know don't have this have this this is bad this is good it's a really 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 difficult thing to stop that from coming out of your mouth you just got to be really careful with your children and and saying good bad food because what they hear is good bad person then the guilt comes in, then the shame comes in, and then secret eating. Not definitely, but can do. The secret eating can come. Some people can have all these things said to them and it doesn't make any difference at all. But what I know is for myself and for hundreds of other women and men that I've spoken to, these things go in deep and they affect the way that we think and feel about food and the way that we eat and the way that we hide what we eat and the way that we overeat and all those things. Carla Martin, if I feel upset, I immediately turn to food. Now, think of all the other things that people do when they feel upset. Pick up a cigarette, have a, a, a booze, sex. But we accept all of that. But society doesn't yet really accept that food can be a drug. It's the drug of choice. You know, if you if you go, you know, when Mark was in rehab, everyone, whether it was an alcoholic, whether they were addicted to computers, whether they were overeaters, they were all in the same group. And the way they described it, de described it in rehab was, what is your chosen drug? And for some people, it's food. And it's still recognised as that in rehab. But in the wider world, people don't recognise it. You know, so that was a big thing I had to work on. Who, who was it that just said that... Um, and this is what I say every week, isn't it? It's pausing before you go for that food. Am I hungry? Am I thirsty? Am I tired and looking for a pick-me-up? Am I sad? Am I lonely? Did I not have the argument that I wanted to have? Answer all those questions. Have a glass of water and then see if you are still actually hungry. Is it here in your tummy like a grumbling hunger? Like you need food or is it here is it here is it like here and you've got these emotions and you want to swallow them down with food to shut them up you know and, and you can just stop and you know what it's not easy it's actually not easy to do that but it's about repetition it's like every monday was well, tuesday today i repeat this because i'm repeating it so it just goes and goes into your head and then you one day you'll hear my voice and you'll just go oh yeah i'm doing that because this is, this is what helped me from going to Overeaters Anonymous. I kept hearing these things over and over again, over and over again. And then I started to think about that. And sometimes the answer is, nah, just really want this cake because it looks cake because it looks bloody delicious. Put it on a nice plate, have a fork or spoon, sit down and bloody enjoy it with no guilt. Huh? Who finds that most of the time if you die, deny yourself one piece, you find yourself in the fridge Later that night, eating half the cake. Chime with anyone? I've chime with anyone? Zivli Skinder, excellent book is Hungry for More. Okay, we'll check that out. Thank you. Um, I think it was, I think it's so interesting as well that you are picking up Julie on the fact that you are putting pressure on your son to comment on your body that you have been and that you've got awareness it's like once we have consciousness of what we're doing it's really hard to hide away because I didn't have consciousness for ages I would say in front of my kids oh I'm so fat oh I'm so this I'm so oh my god I feel so bad now when I think back to it but I didn't have any consciousness of it because it's the way that we spoke all the way through the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Oh, do I look fat from the side? Does my bum look big in this? Does my arm look... Oh, look at my saggy bingo wings. Look at this, look at that. 
It was so much, it was as much part of my language as, you know, what day is it? What time is it? You know, just the, the, the sentences that we say all our life. It was just in the sentences that I was going to say all my life on a daily basis. Carla, children latch on to the way we speak about food. Yeah, absolutely. And please, 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 if anyone is punishing their child with food, please just think about that. Consider something else. And the difficult thing is, if you've been punished with food, you know, we do repeat the mistakes of our parents, don't we? You might just think, oh, it's totally fine to say to a child, well, you're going to go to bed without your dinner. It's not. Oh, it's not. It, 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 it's a mess up. It's, it's, it's attaching emotions and behaviour to food. And what you want to do is have no emotions around food. You know, um, you know, think about how often people, a child will hurt them. So, oh, let me get you a sweetie. Let me get you something sweet. Don't. Give them a hug. Always hug them out of their sadness because giving them a sweet, they make that connection. Something sweet, I'm crying, I'm upset. Something sweet will stop it. Or I must shut up when I'm upset and I must shut up. You know, the subliminal message is, here, I'll tap this sweet <laughs> Don't get me wrong, there's plenty of times when they're little, you know, just shut up, have a bag of crisps. You know, we all do it and it's all right. But it, but just sometimes, but I believe anyway that if every time a child cries, you give them a sweet, you'll make, it makes sense that there's a connection there, doesn't it? It just makes sense. How many of you have just said here, when I'm upset, I turn to food? More often than not, it is sugar that people turn to, to comfort yeah, my mum always pacified me with sweets as a child. Well, Sherry, that's not a connect a cup of tea. And what else comes with a cup of tea? A cup of tea, let's sit down and have a cup of tea and a chat. Because like if I say, if my if my kids are upset and I say, well, should we sit down and have a nice cup of tea? What I'm saying is I'm going to do the ritual of making a cup of tea, which is a loving thing to do, isn't it? And then we're going to sit down and we're going to talk because I want to hear what's going on for you. And, you know, that is a much more productive way to deal with a child. Like my, my children have said to me, Mum, your big mistake was you weren't really listening. You were just looking away to fix. Right, OK, I'm going to do this. And actually, so often, you know, even if it's a little child crying about like a sore knee, you know, if you give them a sweet, you're giving them a message that I want you to shut up quickly and I'm going to give you sugar and sugar will do that. So like with a smaller child, this is what, you know, I learned from a therapist, with a smaller child, you would say, it sounds, so they cry, oh, that sounds like you've really hurt yourself. I can hear that. It's really, you've really hurt yourself. And, um, but you know what? You're going to be better soon. You can definitely, you know, those sorts of words. So you're empathising with them. You're saying that you understand. I understand. That sounds like you've really, that's really upset you. And then when they're older, it's the thing of just going, well, just tell me everything. And you know I can't fix it, but I'm here to, to listen to you and support you. And those things, those little things, I think are massive. Absolutely massive. Ellie Jones has opened a packet of Dolly mixtures and now you feel sick. <laughs> it's because I put Dolly mixtures into your head the other day on Saturday, didn't I, when I was cooking. Um, Jordan Stevenson, throughout my life, my parents have always used food when bad things have happened to try and make me feel better. Too many strong and difficult emotions attached to food. Yeah, and they will have done that from a place of love, like I did with my kids. But it's only when you get consciousness that that you just realise, you know, it's very rare that anybody is doing it out of a nasty thing. You know, we do it because we think it's a nice thing. But when you start to make that shift, and like if you are somebody that's give, always given your sweets, it will be difficult because they'll be wanting their sweets. But you just keep saying, no, I just want to listen to you. I just want to sit here with you and listen to you. I mean, if you just think about it now, whatever age you are, is there anything better than someone really listening to you? It's kind of the greatest gift you can give anyone, you know? So 
please don't say to kids if you're naughty you're not having any food um you know we hear they're really brilliantly put julie about how that you know really did mess up it was the beginning of your disordered eating like if you felt being bad you would starve yourself and all of this so yeah not the best um Thank you so much for that, Julie. Again, really, really kind of you. And I'm so glad that you are working towards that acceptance. It sounds like you're really starting to get moments of real acceptance. And the thing is, it is a daily... I don't want to say battle. I don't want to say fight. It's a daily practice. A bit like yoga. They call yoga a practice. So... Every day you've got to practice it. And every day will be a different day. So yesterday, I had such a difficult day yesterday. I was so, so down. I was really just about as low as I can imagine, really. I just was so disgusted with the world and upset with what's happening in Gaza and all this sort of stuff. And then, and I was really upset, and then I did coffee moaning, and like, it's annoying because you have to keep looking at yourself because you're looking into the camera. And I was just hating on myself so much. I was just saying so many nasty things to myself about the way that I looked. Anyway, about an hour after coffee moaning, and I, was, I walked past a mirror, and I, go, oh, just, and I was like, God, you know what I did? What did I do? I'm noticing now what I'm doing. I've been doing it for the last couple of hours and I notice what I'm doing. Because I'm sad, I'm going to a place of self-loathing because there's something familiar to that to me. I know that place. And that place is like, it roots me, you know, gets me to a safe place. And it's just like, yeah, you're this, you're that. It's like, you know, you're pick I'm picking on myself. And I'm picking on myself in the most pointless and shallow and empty way by attacking this amazing body of mine that does everything for me gets up it walks it you know it runs it cooks it hugs this amazing body I've turned on it and I'm picking on it in a really nasty way and why are you doing that Nadia because you can't deal with your emotions because your emotions because you're really fucking sad you're really sad. So just go upstairs and be sad. And I did. I came up here. I couldn't cry. I'm finding it really difficult to cry at the moment. I could just well up, but I can't cry. I can't. Uh, what I need to do is go. <laughs> and um, I just came up here and I just, and I just did the thing that I've spoken to you about over the weeks, which is I just said, just close my eyes and I made myself see myself as a child because sometimes when I'm this nasty I can only pull back when I see a child and I closed my eyes and I and I got that image up and I just and I did the thing that I say to you every week and I put my arms around myself and I was like what's the matter you know in my head not out loud don't oh listen why being horrible to yourself isn't going to fix anything it's not going to make the world better it's not going to make The Israeli army stopped bombing children. <laughs> you know, I was literally saying this to myself. Why are you hating your body and having to go where you look for this? Where's the... But you see, before I had consciousness, I wouldn't have been able to know that's what I was doing. I would have just gone into this just like this railroad, this track. Like, and I would have become like a victim of my own trolling and it would have just got me like nasty inside and feeling horrible and with, would have ended up with me being in the kitchen stuffing my face to shut down my feelings. But now I go sit with your feelings. You feel fucking sad and you feel angry. And that's all right. All of those emotions just make you human, you know. So, thank you, Carla. Thank you very much. Ashley, I saw you were here. Are you still here? Because I, I, I'm really glad that you're here. Sometimes you read, you read, you write the most painful of things, but also so 
so smart in the what in what you see and what you know and what you are asking for and i know things aren't easy for you and i admire the way that you push through and push on so i hope you're here i hope you've heard some of this and i hope that next week you can be here because mark is going to join me and we're going to do a male and female body loathing because mark is actually i mean i'm six years older than him and i've had more opportunities to in interrogate my dysmorphic thinking but he is still very much in his dysmorphia very very much very painful for him the way that he thinks about the way he looks and stuff so he's gonna join us uh next week so um hopefully more of you can join us um Okay, I want to read for you. Thank you again, Julian. If everybody can thank Julie, that would be lovely. Um, so this is the Donna Ashworth poem that I read and I was like, this is so like what I was saying to, to the guys last week. Do you remember when I said, I never say to people, you've just got to love yourself because it's like looking up the top of fucking great mountain and saying, right, get to the top of it in five minutes on your knees, more or less. That's what I was saying. It doesn't work like that. We can't love ourselves. We have to be American to be able to love us. We just don't do that. But we are moving towards accepting. Trying to be strong, healthy of mind and body, but moving towards acceptance. That's it. Oh, Catherine, I know he is, but he just, he, he just, he just hates on himself all the time. It's terrible. Okay. So, this is the first line of Donna Ashworth's poem. Loving yourself is a big ask. To some, it may as well be a mountain covered in treacherous ice. Start by showing yourself some slack every now and again. Move into a healthy mutual respect and then maybe gravitate to treating yourself as you would a good friend. It's just exactly what I said. I said was, laugh at your own jokes, compliment your outfit choice and be forgiving when you've made mistakes. Yes, 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 this is it. It's the least you would give to another. So it shouldn't be too far a stretch. Loving yourself is a big ask. Start with letting yourself off the hook. Sometimes the rest will come. I love that. And then here's another one. That's where you find it. It's just a short poem, another one from Donna, Ash Donna Ashworth. You search for your beauty in the mirror, in photographs, in the label of clothes. When you really should be searching through the messages sent to you by grateful friends, the cards written to you on special days in times of need, the memories of smiles you created from treats, tears. Your beauty lies in all the ways you touch and care for those around you, my friend. The jokes you make on a gloomy day and the music you share to inspire. The times you showed up when no one else did and the invisible net of love, laughter and light you have spread across this planet without glory or vanity. That's where you find your beauty. Now, you could easily listen to that and say, but I've never done that and I've never spread love and light and beauty and I've never da 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 and I don't have the sort of friends, I haven't got letters, I haven't got... But what do we do here? We look for the similarities, not the differences. So you may not have a pile of beautiful letters from friends. Well, no, I haven't. But what are sometimes the things that you've done that you feel proud of for a friend? And if you don't have any friends, what about the things that you've done that have been a lovely thing when trying to make friends? Because it's not what, how they've responded. It's what did you do? What did you put out into the world? You know, did you smile at someone? Did you distract when there was a tired mum in the supermarket or on the bus? Did you distract a child? Did you just, you know, look for look for similarities, not the differences. 
You might think that you've never put any love or light or joy out in the world, but you will have done. And if it feels like you haven't done that for a long time, go back, go back in time and look. And if you go back in time and you can't find anything, go ahead and think, what I'm going to do is tomorrow when I'm out and about, I'm just going to smile at somebody that I think looks a bit sad or a bit tired. These are the places to look for the beauty in yourselves. I'm telling you now, it works. It really works. Anyway, thank you all so much for being with me. I need to become a better listener, said Julie. So do I. I mean, I am so much better listener than I was. I can't tell you. But it is always, in fact, I was talking about that today because um, I tried to become a Samaritan, but they didn't need me. <laughs> I had too many of them. And um, one of the reasons I wanted to become a Samaritan is I wanted to really, really become a better listener because I am... Um, a rescuer so I tend to listen but I'm looking for the way that I can help that person and within that if we're honest yes there's good heart in that but also there is ego in that so that's what I'm working on please read the world I fell out of oh okay I'm loving all these um all these recommendations but where I haven't got a pen I can't write them down um so let's do what we usually do at the end and if you're new, the self-hug is the most underrated thing. People don't realise you can do it yourself. Now, I have a family, I've got a husband, I've got children that if I beg, they'll give me a hug. I have hugs available, right? And I know there's lots of people that don't have hugs available. But either way, whether you do have hugs from somebody or you don't, Learn to hug yourself. Teach your children how to hug themselves. Teach them that there is no shame in this. Just like rocking back. I do give a pat. Not everybody does because people, some people hate getting a pat. Like, I, like when I hug someone, I give them a bit of a pat and a rub. <laughs> well, Nash1963, I never get a hug. You can get a hug from yourself, right? You can. So, you might feel silly to begin with. I came up a couple of times yesterday when I was feeling really low and just hugged myself. Right, some people add in a rock. Oh my God, I mean, I could literally just drift off to sleep. It will trigger deep memories. Even if you didn't have very nice parents or whatever, there's probably some point in your life when you were a child where somebody put their arms around you, gave you a hug, maybe even rocked you. And yeah, Carla, it does. It honestly, if you're having trouble sleeping, sometimes just sit up in your bed, close your eyes. Oh my God, it's just so lovely. And I love to notice this. The only time we really see anyone hug themselves, right, and this is why we don't do it, because there's shame attached to it. The only reason we really, the time we only ever see it, is when someone is in the most dire of situations or mental health crisis. And you'll see this, you'll see this. And you know why that is? Because the instinct that we have overrides all of what we worry about what society will think if we hug ourselves. That's why. But when times are absolutely dire, you will see people rocking and hugging. And the thing is, you don't have to be in that kind of state. You can just have a hug. So, like... Say you are finding yourself in the biscuit barrel and you've asked yourself, do I really want a biscuit? If, if the answer is yes, I just want this biscuit, well then have it. But if the answer is I'm feeling a bit sad, I'm feeling a bit lonely, I'm feeling a bit alone, I'm feeling like I need to be comforted, try this. This is another one where you can just sort of go round and round like this. And sometimes even this. Sometimes this, two hands like this on the back of the head, because we're held a lot as babies. I, I like this sometimes, one round the neck, one round the back of the head. It's 
So it's just holding the head. It's 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 good, but you do have to practice. Practice noticing when you are being unkind to yourself. Practice self-hugging. Practice hugging your pillow. Hilary Jones that hugs a pillow. That's a good one. But Ellery also try hugging yourself. It's even better than a pillow. Because you can feel that. You can feel that human connection back on yourself. Anyway, I've rocked myself off to sleep now. <laughs> Good night, everybody. And take care. Yeah? Be kind to yourself. As Donna also says. Why not just be as kind to yourself as you would to your friend or your child or to your, you know. Take a note, a leaf out of your own book. Night, night.